In this example, we're told that we have an air bubble of 10 millimeters, and it's released at a depth of 30 meters below the surface of a lake. And we're asked to estimate the bubble diameter when it reaches the lake surface. We're also told to assume that the lake temperature doesn't vary with depth. So the idea is this, we have some lake surface. It's P atmospheric up here. We have a bubble down here with a certain diameter. We'll call it dH, since we'll say this depth is H. And we want to know what the bubble diameter is once it reaches the free surface up here. Gravity is pointing downward. So we'll assume that the air behaves as an ideal gas. So we have the ideal gas law for the air inside the bubble. And we'll assume that the mass inside the bubble remains constant. Gas constant, of course, for air remains constant. And we're told that the lake temperature doesn't vary with depth, and we'll assume that the air bubble has the same temperature as the surrounding uh, lake water temperature. So all of these will be a constant, which then means that the pressure at any depth h and volume at any depth h will be the same as the pressure at the free surface and the volume at the free surface. So the free surface, the, the zero subscript here, refers to being right up here where uh, h is zero. Okay, now we can determine the pressure at the various depths using the hydrostatic pressure relation. So the pressure at depth h will be atmospheric pressure, the pressure we start with up here on the free surface, plus the density of the lake water times gravity times h. And the pressure at the free surface will just be atmospheric pressure. One thing to note is that the pressure in the ideal gas law is the absolute pressure. So I'll leave the P atmosphere in the expression since we're dealing with absolute pressures. So we can combine these together to give us the volume at the free surface is equal to the volume at H times pH over P0, which we now have expressions for. And then we can simplify that just a little bit further. So this tells us what the volume of the bubble will be at the free surface. And if we assume that the bubble remains a sphere the whole time, then the volume will just be pi over 6 times the diameter of the sphere cubed. So we can substitute that expression in for the volume and what we'll end up with is the following. So this is how our diameter at the free surface will depend on the diameter at depth h, and then the hydro this, this expression comes from the hydrostatic pressure relation. All right, let's go ahead and plug in some numbers here. We're told that the diameter at depth H is 10 millimeters. We, can, we know that the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. H, we were told, was 30 meters. And P atmosphere is 101.3 kilopascals. So when we plug all these numbers in, what you'll find is the diameter at the free surface comes out to be 15.7 millimeters.